Hey guys, it's tutorial time. Today I'll be showing you how to build the trading bays that were in my Let's Play series. I got a big amount of requests to do a tutorial, so today I will be showing you how to build the trading bays that are in front of us right now. Now the the build does look a little bit complicated, but it's not. It's quite easy, and I'll be show, I'll try to explain everything as we're going along, and we'll take it nice and easy so you guys can follow. Alright guys, before we start the tutorial, I better explain how it works, alright? Okay, so this end here will be hooked up to a villager breeder, which will not be in this tutorial. Um, if you, I'm pretty sure if you type on YouTube, um, video, uh, villager, tuto villager breeder tutorial, you probably get one. If you want me to do one, not a problem, just ask in the description below. Uh, not description, the comments below, just ask and I'll uh, see what I can do. But this end here is meant to be hooked up to a villager breeder. Pretend we're a villager right now. We pretty much fall in the canal and they automatically jump, you see? So once they've uh, got themselves up here, they will fall down, tripping this, and they'll fall in their cell. Now, the reason why it has tripped that is to turn the water off, you see? So, if another villager came along, he was holding spacebar, guess what? He's going to go to the next cell. Like that. He's going to be pushed and same thing. And he's in the cell, ready to trade. Not ready to punch you, but ready to trade. Okay, quite simple. And the same thing with the end one. And we can turn that off if we like. Like that. Okay, now if you do not, if you do not like that trade from the villager and you want to get rid of him, not a problem. You press this button here. And what that actually does is 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 opened a um, piss a sticky piston, sending off the villager down to lava or wherever you want to their death, resetting the cell as you can see here, and allowing for ready for the next villager to be bred and put in it to replace it automatically. You don't have to do nothing. So let's reset these cells. Reset, reset. Okay, so the cells reset. Okay guys, let's get this tutorial started, shall we? I'll be using stone bricks in this tutorial. You can use whatever block you desire. So first off, we want to, we're want we going to actually start with the canal system at the back. We're going to be roughly building about three cells in this tutorial, but you can go as far as you want. You can build hundreds of cells if you like, but in this tutorial, we'll only be building three. So let's get started, shall we? Okay, so we're building the canal system at the back. We want to build that off the ground, all right? Um, so we're going to go up by two, one, two, and on the third block, we're going to go out like that. So it's like a T. We're going to turn it into a U. All right, and we can knock out those two bottom blocks because they were only there, so we can measure how many blocks it's off the ground by two. All right, so we're going to turn this into this. This here's going to be our canal. So it's quite easy. We're going to run seven more. We're going to run yes, yeah, about seven blocks long. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just gonna fill all this in now. Whoop. And this is where our villagers will travel down to resupply the trading bays if you if the trading bay is currently empty. Okay, so once we've got our canal system in, we want to start placing some dispensers. This will dispense the water. So we're going to start by placing the dispensers on any side you want. Just decide which 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 way is going to be the front of your machine. So um, the uh, uh, the front of our machine, our front of our trading base is going to be this way. So we want to go back here. We want to place the dispenser facing that way. Quite easy. And then you just pretty much leave a gap. Put another dispenser. Leave a gap. Put another dispenser because it's going to be a three. This is just going to be a three cell system. You, as I said, you can go as far as you want. Okay, so after you've done that, we're going to get some stone bricks out, and we're pretty much going to make... We're going to fill the gaps in like this. Okay. So it should be looking just like that. And now what we want to do is we want to get our signs out. And we want to go down inside the canal system. 
Okay, so on every where there's a where there is a dispenser, we want to place a sign. Every single one. Now the reason why these signs are here is to stop the water coming down because these dispensers are actually going to dispense water. Then this counts as a block, so water cannot fit down here and will just flow over the top like that. This is where our where our villages will go. Okay. So once we got that done, we want to start on the front of the machine so we go right down to the bottom here and we're going to bring it out by another two like this and then we're going to put a little canal in here like this as you can see there we go should be looking like that and you can bring it up a little high if you like take it right up to the top level with the the dispensers pretty much okay so once you've done that we want to create a, like a ring so this block here, we want to create a ring like this. All the way around like that. And we want to fill the gap in here and here. Okay. So we're going to get our signs out again. And we're going to be placing signs on the end of that little U-shaped ring. Doesn't matter. Like that. That's just to stop the water going off the edge. Quite simple. And we can get our bucket of water now. Place it down there. And there and there okay see it stops it going off the edge okay so now what we want to do is build up this a little bit higher just so your villagers do not escape okay so the villagers cannot can't escape at the moment so now what we want to do is you want to grab out some trip wire hooks and you want to come back to this block here just above that water source that we just placed down and we want to put trip hooks all along there and then we want to go to the front here and we want to do the same thing above the sign trip hook trip hook trip hook okay and then we all we have to do is add the string in so the best thing is to to look at the block above the water right there click jump over same thing click click okay so now now all your all your tra all your um trip wires are hooked up so when the villager falls on it it will set it off which this is going to turn on and off our dispensers at the back okay okay so now what we want to do is we want to think about starting to put these uh, buckets of waters in the dispenser but before but first before we do that as you can see if, if that dispenser shoots out water it's gonna flow over the edge and knock out our port our um, trip wire hooks and to stop that you just put a sign up there there and there quite simple that now that the water cannot go over the edge but the villager will okay let's put our bucket inside the dispenser quite easy we need a couple more buckets okay so all our dispensers now have water and ready to be fired first off we need to now we need to, we've done that, we need to go back in the in the canal, this back area where the signs are, and pretty much, so right before the sign, we want to break that block, we want to put a redstone torch on this block right here, like that, alright, in between the signs, same thing, all the way along, and if you've got more, you can keep going, so just, yeah, pretty much where the, where the sign is, that block has to have a torch coming out of it, alright, now the reason why that is, is because that trip, the trip wire is also hooked into that block, which will turn off that redstone torch. Same for every cell, you get it? So now we want to do is we want to place a redstone torch where, where the block has been powered. So this, this torch here, all the torches are powering the block above it, which is right there. See, it turns off the redstone torch, so you want to place a redstone torch all the way along like that. Okay. So this is a little, little bit more complicated, this little bit here, but this is so it doesn't interfere with any, uh, each cell is individual and doesn't interfere with anything else. So let's start with the first cell. On top of this redstone torch here, we want to place a block. And then um, on the side of that block, we want to place a redstone torch, like that. And on top of that redstone torch, we want to place a block. Okay. And now what we want to do is come back down to the dispenser here and we'll want to build it up like stairs, like that. Alright, so we knock out that block we don't need. So stairs like that, okay? 
And all we have to do is you put, we need a piece of redstone, which is not a problem. Get out our redstone, put a piece of redstone here, which will be powered, which will turn off our torch. And that there will actually power the dispenser every single time. So, pretend you're a villager, and if you were coming up here to, to, to trigger off, see, it turns it on and off. All right, we need to do that for every single cell. It's quite easy. And we just do stairs, as I was saying. And torch. Okay. Do, let's do this one more time, just so, just so you get the hang of it. So, on top of that redstone torch block, on, on that block, redstone torch, and on top of that torch, another block. And then at the back here, we want to build the stairs going up. Break that block. And then we want to place a redstone, piece of redstone like that. Like that. There we go. So that's gonna that's gonna turn on and off our cells when a villager is in it. So the so the cells do not fill up with villagers. <laughs> that would be really, really bad. Okay. Okay, let's continue guys. So once we're up to that stage, now we want to start thinking about the bottom part or the front part of the machine. See this part is done. So now we want to come down here and we pretty much just want to bring it down by two. So just, just make sure you bring it down by two, like this. So if you can see that water, you want to bring it down by two. And once you've done that, that's where the villager will sit, right there. You want to do that all the way along, like that. Okay. So once you've done that, we want to get some sticky pistons out. Because if the trade is no good, we want to eject the poor old villager to somewhere unknown. So what we want to do is come to the back block here. And not underneath this block, but just the one at the back. See that? So that, so there's like a one one gap here. Well, not a gap, but one back. Alright, so one back from each block. So not underneath, but one back like that. Because the pist piston is going to extend. And we're going to place a block in front of that sticky piston like that all the way along okay so we're gonna get some redstone out now this is gonna control the piston plus reset the cell okay so we're going to go to the end here and we're going to run redstone to the front here like that see like that so all the way along just just put redstone all the way along like that in between the pistons like that it can go it go it's got to go all the way to the back here to the back of the piston like that but no no further than that all right quite simple and then we, we're going to leave this block here so this block here is going to be anything you want you could put i'm going to run it outside the map so the villager is going to fall down to his death but you want to run this down to a lava pool or something go for it this is this this technique here you can you can kill the villager however you like all right, and we're going to place a block like that. Okay, so now you can build the floor if you like. We're just going to do a quick, simple floor. There we go. And there we go. So that is why we built it off the ground a little bit. Just so we got access underneath for the redstone. But if suppose if you're building it on the floor, you would have to dig some things out. But that's not too 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 hard. Okay, so what what else we want to do now is come to the back. We want to get all this hooked up now. We want to get these. We want these pistons to be extended constantly, so we, they don't just fall to their death. So it's quite easy. The, where where we ran the redstone, place a block. Redstone block. Redstone block. Then on the side of that block, at the back of the piston, you want to you want to place redstone torches, like so. Okay, which will push the piston, the sticky piston out, which just pushes the block over. So the poor villagers, if he was here, cannot fall down. All right. Okay. So now we're going to put, hook up a button, which is quite easy. Use a button. You can use a lever. You can do whatever. But I recommend a button because it works the best. Place a button there. Button there. Button there. Okay. So. So all the cells currently work really, really well. Now the problem is, if a villager did come over and 
activated the trip here, which turns the cell off because there's a villager in here, and you don't you do not want the trade. Oh, the trade the the villager's got you know really bad trade. You press the button. Well, oh, wrong one. You press the button. He'll be ejected out of the cell, and now we just got to make it so it resets the water at the back here. All right, quite simple. So from this from the redstone torch, which is the back of the piston, we run it out twice and now we start going up so we place a block there then on top of that block we place a redstone torch on top of that redstone torch we place another block and on top of that block we place another redstone torch where we're pretty much repeating it over and over again until we get to the back of the dispenser which should be off alright okay it's got to be off same thing all the way along bring it out at the back of the machine you see it should be at the back of the machine and we just you know, redstone torch, block, redstone torch, block. It just carries the signal straight up. And same with this one. So all three cells are going to be hooked up. Nice and simple. And there we go. So that there is every single cell currently hooked up. So to reset the cell, say this middle cell right now has got no no water running so no villager can go up just hit the button the villager goes bye bye the cell gets reset you see quite simple and I'll, I'll even show you it in action shall we so just pretend you have this hooked up to a villager breeder you have your very own villager breeder and it's breeding villagers and you send the send the breed bred villagers down so let's get let's get a villager villager egg and oh we want to get a bucket of water first you want to place a bucket of water in the canals at the back here I should have said that <laughs> but there you go so all you got to do is place your your villager in and he'll automatically come up like that and he's in the cell <laughs> there is nothing to hold him in the cell at the moment so all you have to do for that is get out a slab of your choice which we'll just use that one Oh, he ran away. I can't believe that. I should have put some slabs at the front first. There you go. And that will hold the villagers in the cells. Now you can make the cells as you know as big as you want, but this is this is easiest to get to, so you can check their trades. So obviously there's no villager in there at the moment. We want to reset that. There we go. And let's get let's get another village. Let's get villagers in all these. Sorry about that. Oh, he went to the second one. Sometimes they do skip. It's not 100%. But it works pretty well. It comes. So that one will turn off. One last one. See? He's trying to get up, but there's no, no water source there for him. Up he comes. Quite simple. And bam. Okay. And then you can just click on them to check their trades out. Yep. It's like, I don't like your trade. Bye. He's gone. Cells reset. It's a quite easy, simple design. As I said, you can extend it out as far as you want. Like I have it. I have, uh, I've forgotten the number of cells in my base, but I have a massive U shape of these cells. And yeah, it works quite, quite well. Anyway, I hope this tutorial helped you build your own cells. If you have any questions, just um, ask it below and I'll try to answer it. Anyway guys, thanks for watching this tutorial and I'll catch you all later.